Hello, everyone, and thank you so much again for joining us on the No Excuse and DNC Academy Inspired to Inspire show. I'm your guy, Mr. M. Benga. I'm the entrepreneurship trainer, business coach, and Mr. Automator. Wow, you know, last year we once brought a superstar musician from Germany who was talking about changing your passion into be a career. Right now, he is a multi-millionaire. And then I said, why not? come back home, you know, and come, you know, and I had to come all the way from Germany, coming back home in Africa and go and say, oh, who can I bring on this amazing show? Who is going to be sharing it with us? Uh, 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 her journey and uh, who is she? How did she move from where she was to be where she is right now, being a superstar, being the, uh, 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 one of the actors to be featured in the first Zimbabwean movie, uh, I mean, uh, the first Zimbabwean original movie to be on Netflix. So she is not just somebody, but she is an international superstar. Please help me welcome uh, 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 Tendai Shechitima. How are you, my sister? <laughs> Hi, Munya. How are you doing? I'm Mr. Doing, Dongo. <laughs> I'm doing very well, and I'm so thrilled. And thank you so much for creating time for you to, to also be on this uh, interview. It means a lot to me, because I know you are a very busy person, but thank you so much for, for, for your creating time as well. Thank you for having me. Amazing, amazing. So um, I've known you, I think this is like the second year. I, yeah, the, I, I can say, I can simply say, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's two or three years right now. Uh, three, uh, I think it's three years, yeah. Yeah, yeah, from, from the time that I, I first met you after uh, I actually I referred to you by, by, um, by one of my dearest mom, uh, 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 Chiro. And um, yeah, and you know, I've known you. I only know that you were a speak, uh, you, 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 you were uh, an actor by the time you say, Munya, I'm going to US. We are going to, to we are actually busy doing this. And I said, okay, so tell me more about that. So, so, you know, all along, I didn't even know who is this lady until that time. So can you please tell me, I'm now giving you a chance to redeem your, yourself and tell me <laughs> who is Tendai? <laughs> yeah, who is Tendai? Can you please tell us who is Tendai? <laughs> okay, so thank you for that intro. Um, it's so good to be on this platform. Really good to be speaking with you and uh, being part of your work. I'm really, really inspired by what you're doing. Um, and what a privilege it is to be um part of inspiring other people. I'm very grateful for my journey. I am Tendai Chitima and I am an actress um, and I have training in drama, in film, in media. And I also have a business, uh, I have business training as well. But essentially I'm a person who's very passionate about the creative arts and I'm passionate about um, merging commerce with, with the arts and finding ways um, and how to bridge that gap between um, being an artist and business or creating sustainable, viable careers in the arts. So that's basically who I am. I am passionate about Africa, about the future of Africa. I'm passionate about um, development in the arts, um, yes, that's like in a nutshell, that's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, uh, when you were saying that, uh, you mentioned one of the very important things, like uh, merging arts and commerce, right? There are so many people who are very good actors or very good musicians, very good uh, painters, very good artists, but they're just they don't know how to monetize that you know they they have no idea how to monetize that at all you know um so so how are you managing that can, can you tell me how are you managing um being an artist and also use that as a business so how how are you doing that can, can you tell me on that well so i'm still on my own journey as well because like you said um a lot of times what happens in the arts is that if you're an artist you, you focus a lot on your on your art you want to become the best painter you want to become the best actress you want to become the best musician the best singer and so a lot of your time is spent maybe with your like focusing on your craft 
and focusing on opportunities within that craft, right? And, but then for those of you who know the arts industry uh, or the creative sector, it's very, sometimes it's, it can be very, very um, unstable in terms of like your jobs, how many jobs you get and what kind of jobs they are. Um, some, there's a lot of competition and also with the pandemic, a lot of things closed down. So whether if you're a musician who was um, dependent on like music, uh, on sessions, on playing in, on uh, for gigs and everything like that, it means that, you know, you're out of work, things like that. So there's just so much that goes on in the creative sector, but that involves uh, face-to-face interaction. So the pandemic was a great blow to the arts industry. But then now it's really about seeing yourself as a, as a, um, like thinking outside of your craft, thinking outside of your skills and your talent and trying to see what you do as a product that you can offer or a service that you can offer, whether it's going to be face-to-face or even online. So a lot of times you realize that artists, maybe we've been slow in adapting to um, online platforms and things like that. Again, because we're so used to -to face-to-face interaction, sometimes most of our work is done um, face-to-face. I know there's even a theater that was closed down, uh, a really big, um, iconic theater called the Fugard Theater, which is named after Arthur Fugard. If you know him, he's a playwright. Um, it was closed down in Cape Town. So things like that have happened. And so it's really about using business principles to try and create sustainable careers. Because wow. if you look at an artist, as an artist, how flexible are you? Mm -hmm. How adaptive are you to the environment? When things are changing, are you also adapting? Are you are you finding innovative ways of of uh, producing your work? Innovative ways of offering um, your talent? Are you thinking of collaborations? Do you have someone who helps with the administration of your of your craft? Um, Are you marketing yourself properly? Are you packaging yourself properly? All these things need to be there and like I said I'm on my own journey as well I'm figuring it out but because I just finished my business degree um about a year ago uh, I'm just trying to really try to I'm trying to apply the principles that I've learned um and also Mm -hmm. trying to help others as well as I go along to make sure that um you know for example I am at the moment trying to put a team around myself Mm -hmm. to help me with the different aspects of my career if you think about people like Beyonce or, you know, these really, really big international stars, mm. they don't work in this in silos. They have huge yeah. teams around them. You know what I mean? You can't mm. make it on your own. You have to have help, right. even with contracts, even with, uh, you know, just scheduling. What if you get like five gigs in f- over a month? How are you? Um, how are you negotiating those contracts? How are you mm. planning your, your time? Um, and I know that in, in music, for example, I think they, they have a, they generally have a good structure. You find that most musicians will have a manager, they'll have the booking agent, but in some other art, artistic um, spaces, such as acting, we have a huge gap for talent management there in Africa, at least. And so it's really trying to create this team around you um, that can help you propel uh, to a to a higher level and help you to fulfill your highest potential. Wow! Hey, yeah. please don't, don't <laughs> take my job of being an entrepreneurship trainer. <laughs> I still need my job, please. Wow! <laughs> you shared so much there, and <laughs> truthfully speaking, alone you might get busy, not productive. Because you've got this, you've got that, you've got this, you've got that. Because remember, there is a difference between being busy and being productive. <laughs> yeah, so That's thank true. you so much for doing that. And if you are a, a, an actor or or, or, or somebody, or, or I can say an aspiring one, or a musician, yeah, try hard to also find it. It can be one person that can also help you in, in managing the, the oil or all of the things. But wow, so so tell me, because in this question, you, you kind of like the answer, uh, the question I want to ask you right now. Um, what are some of the challenges um, uh, that you actually encounter as an actor who is trying also to build a brand? We're also going to talk more and more about how important is a brand 
this is for you mm -hmm. as an artist, right? Yeah, but, but before you go, what are challenges? Um, uh, because remember, nobody is born as Beyonce and nobody is born yeah. as Ron <laughs> Ferguson, right? You start somewhere and you go, and nobody was born as Tendai Shechitima, the one we see right now. Yeah, right. You were not born like, like, like this. You're not born with this brand that you know, but you start building it and grow. So, so, so tell me, what are some of the challenges did you first um, uh, so far um, uh, in, your, in your career? And what are challenges now? Are you facing right now because of the brand you also have? Because there is two sides of the coin. Let's butter them both. <laughs> yes, so right. There are always two sides of the coin, right? Yeah. Um, so some of the challenges I faced, like I think there's some, I kind of alluded to them earlier. Um, just the, okay, besides being an artist, we, we you don't exist in a vacuum. There's a whole, there's, al there's always like a, a space, right? You, you exist in a, in a system, in a structure of some kind of industry. I think one of the first challenges I faced um, being from Zimbabwe was that I didn't necessarily grow up um, knowing a film and television industry um, that was thriving, that had systems. So I, I had lack of information. I didn't know what to do and how to do it. And even up until today, I have a lot of uh, young people who text me, who message me asking me for help because they don't know what to do or how to go about it as uh, aspiring actors, and which is very unfortunate. And it's something that I'm really passionate about um, trying to resolve is that people don't know enough about the industry. And when we, when we look at Zimbabwe specifically, uh, the information isn't readily there or the professionals are not readily um, accessible sometimes to give you um, sufficient information on how to get to where you want to get to. Uh, and sometimes yeah. you find that a lot of talent from Zimbabwe has left the country. So some, some of our biggest stars are not even in Africa, they're in Hollywood um, or in the UK. So it's very, um, it was very difficult at the beginning. And what I ended up having to do was I was, I used, I stalked a lot of people online <laughs> and I would inbox them and I would get information. I would just try, just try to, and then also I joined a couple of, um, of industry groups. So for example, there's a group called Sisters Working in Film and Television here in South Africa. It's called SWIFT. I joined that group. They had, it's like, um, it's, it's a group of women who work in the film and television industry and they basically together to create um, an environment and a platform where we can spotlight uh, women's work in the industry and advocate for women and support one another and collaborate and create work opportunities. So it was such a great environment for me to learn in a safe space. So I got, I, I think I, I really did get a lot of information and exposure while I was in that group. So, um, and then another challenge was um, just, you know, finding my way sometimes I was fortunate enough to get an agent. Um, I think it was the year, the second year after I graduated, I got an agent, which was very helpful for me to get work. So again, sometimes we struggle to get work, but if you have an agent, um, the agent will help you to book jobs or at least to go to auditions and things like that. So, um, but then again, even with the agent, I still struggle to get work sometimes because of, the fact that I was a foreigner here in South Africa. And so there weren't a lot of roles that, um, that I could play in. Um, but, you know, um, I had to look outside of South Africa. That's how I ended up on cook -off, is that I literally looked for, for jobs myself. I decided to be proactive. Um, another, another challenge was, um, just, you know, handling yourself as a young woman in the industry and making sure that, you know, no one is exploiting you or taking advantage of you, just knowing your values and being able to negotiate and navigate um, the industry where sometimes people with power, um, you know, are trying to manipulate or trying to get favors from you that have nothing to do with the work at hand. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, they, I mean, it's just literally always navigating and negotiating the space that you're in um but yeah i've been able to overcome oh another thing was overcoming disappointment yes because you know auditioning can break your back 
<laughs> you get more you get more no's than you get yeses that's correct right so yeah so imagine like a lot of people always say oh my gosh how do you handle the rejection because you will go for so many auditions and you might get one yes in a whole year or in six months or whatever. Um, so it, it can get really, really exhausting. And so for me, it was very important, I think, to always persevere and to get over a disappointment. Um, even you asked me even today, today also still, I'm still, you know, having to overcome disappointments, things not working out the way you expected them to work and just kind of staying focused on the goal and what you're dreaming about um and i think those have been the challenges that i faced over time i'm sure there are more but i'll, I'll we might end up take, taking the whole interview just talking about the challenges <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what Nedran? you tackled um, some very key points there that doesn't just really happen in the film industry but in life in general like knowing how to negotiate not having people to negotiate for you. Like, you know, um, I, I, I train people on how to negotiate. And, you know, because I recognize that ne negotiation, it is a skill on its own. So you, you need to learn it. You can learn it. But if, if you can negotiate on your own, then you are just going to be either a yes person or a no person every time. And then also the other thing, the other thing is, well, um, I love what you said that um, I was very proactive knowing that, okay, <clears throat> I've got number one, a disadvantage of I am staying, I am living in, in a foreign land. So basically we can't blame those agents because some of the movies, especially right here in South Africa, most of the movies, they've got mixed language some that they might want somebody who is also be able to speak Zulu and you can't even pronounce Ka, you know, and that would be, uh, you know, and that would be very disadvantageous. But you found your way out there by being proactive, even also in my career. If I wasn't proactive, uh, I am telling you, I was supposed to be somewhere like very down without all these plans for over 23 countries. But thank God we managed to, 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 to break the ground and do that. So mm. tell me again, uh, how on earth did you end up in Kukov? How on earth did you end up being there? You know, I watched that movie three, no, two times and half the other part, I didn't finish it. I was just tricking you and say, okay, how did this lady do this? And, and you know, <laughs> trying to understand, like, okay. So, because I could connect and say, wow, this really happened in real life. This is like real life. You can't even think that <laughs> this is a movie, you know? Yeah. And how did you end up in Kuko? And to make matters this, what was your reaction by you knowing that, okay, that the movie is going to be on Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> you know what i must say i love your enthusiasm i'm loving your energy and your excitement about this film it makes me happy and thank you for the feedback um i'm happy that it, it you could relate to it and that it felt like it was happening for real it, it's a very it's very good feedback for an actor um but how i got onto like i said i was proactive um and so i had met one the one time i visited zimbabwe I had actually auditioned. Uh, I'm sure now you know Joe Jangu, um, who, who is the producer of Cook Off. Um, I had met him, like maybe, let's say in 20, when was that? I met him in 2015. And now this was 2017. In 2015, I'd met him in Zimbabwe. He had been filming uh, another film, like another feature film with someone else. And I had auditioned for that movie in 2015 and I didn't get the part you see again your audition and there's rejection and whatever and then so but I, I connected with him on his on Facebook and um I left it like that because I went back I came back to South Africa and then in 2017 after realizing I think this is when the awakening happened and I realized you know what, I need to be more proactive I then uh decided I was going for a wedding in Zimbabwe um, one of my best friends was getting married and I was maid of honor and I was going to be in Zimbabwe for like a month. So I decided, you know what? I might as well go see uh, what the Zimbabwean industry is like because I've never really 
um, seeing how they do film in Zimbabwe. And the, I only knew two producers in Zimbabwe, Joe and another person. Um, I'd been connected I, I'd been connected to that person by a cousin of mine. And so I inboxed them on Facebook. I inboxed and I said, listen, I'm going to be in Zimbabwe for a month. Can I be on set? Can I come and just watch or can we collaborate on something? I don't know. I didn't even know what was going to happen. I just messaged them on Facebook, these two producers, and only Joe responded. And, you know, he didn't even respond like with paragraphs or anything. He was actually just responding like, hi, how are you? Oh, that's great to know. Then he would go quiet on me for like three days. And then the one time I, I kept following up. And then so he eventually said, listen, we actually have a film that we're shooting and we're still looking for a lead character. I was like, what? And then so I started pestering him because he was so, he wasn't consistent on Facebook. And I, it got me so, <laughs> I was worked up because I was so excited, but this person was not giving me information. So, but, but, but when he said that it's a lead role available ah, mm. i was on it i was like joe you need to tell me more about this because i've been wanting a lead role she, she. and then um that's when he eventually messaged me with information and said i'm going to in introduce you to thomas brickle who's the director for cook off and so i i then had a, a phone call because they were all in zimbabwe and i was in south africa so i had a call with thomas we spoke over the phone. He sent me the script. He said, why don't you read the script before I give you the role? Mm -hmm. And I read the script. I loved it. And story was so touching. Mm -hmm. And the, the movie, I mean, the script was, was lighthearted. And I loved how he had written it. And so I, I accepted. I was like, I would love to be Anisu. And then he says, yes, and I think you'd be great. So that's how I got the role. And then literally I said yes on a Wednesday. And I was in Zimbabwe on the Friday and we started filming on the Monday. So everything happened within a week. Yeah. The, it was literally last minute. They, they secured the lead person the week they were about to, to, to film. So wow. that, it was very quick. Um, but it was, I think, but the right it time. It like, like you have been racing in months. It showed like, like you have been no, racing for months. <laughs> You didn't have rehearsals. I was just very focused because remember what I told you, I was struggling to get work. So I'd been actually praying oh. about it. I I'd said, I really want to be in a lead role. So this was my first film and it was my first time acting as a lead character. And so I was very focused on set. I was extremely focused about my work <laughs> and I'm glad I, I was able to deliver something that people loved. Um, it's really encouraging. I won't lie. <laughs> it is but it taught me something it taught mm -hmm. me about how um because the timing was just so perfect it just taught me about how we should always follow our instincts sometimes mm -hmm. you should really follow oh. your gut feeling if you have you know you never know sometimes people are afraid to approach people mm -hmm. or to but you never know you never know what that person is doing or thinking about and you might actually just talk to someone at the right time when they actually need someone like you um in their projects so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> That's very correct. That's the don't uh, 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 let fear overcome you uh, because, mm. yes, yeah, uh, uh, because most of the time um, you might be afraid of doing something, yet it's one thing that's going to open your, your door like never before. Wow, thank you so yeah. much for that. Um, and what was your reaction knowing that the movie is going to be on Netflix? You see, that's the so shocked I mean they had been telling me because we released it in 2017 the first version of the film was released in 2017 and then for like three years we didn't hear anything about the film I mean we knew it was going to festivals I even went to two festivals with the film uh -huh. um but they kept saying we're, we're going to be we're, we're in talks when talks with people but they never told us who they were in talks with <laughs> so then um they decided to tell Tendai Nguni and I, Ten Diamond and I, on a phone call, a video phone call, and they said, we want to show you something. And they showed us the poster with the Netflix logo. I was like, I was so happy. I was, because I, I, I already had Netflix. Like, I would watch Netflix movies and stuff. So to think that I would now be able to go on Netflix and see myself inside Netflix was like, it was it was amazing. I was so happy. And I was so happy and, and grateful. 
<laughs> and I blame you because you caused me to go and buy Netflix. Was I never? Mean, I said, oh, who or you know where am I gonna get time to go and sit down and watch Netflix? Never <laughs> me, never because I don't even have all these subscription for entertainment. I don't have them because I don't have time. Said, so hmm. If my sister is there, then I need to be going like, and just to see yes. why they are there. And so I blame Thank you. Thank you for supporting. If go, <laughs> so if I go broke, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> okay. But um, you know what? You need to keep your subscription because there's more coming. That's all I can say. There's oh, wow. more content coming on Netflix. So you really need to, to, to keep your subscription. <laughs> That sounds like news to me. That sounds like news to me. Okay. Um. Yeah. You know. <laughs> that sounds like news to me. Really. Tendy. Okay. So tell me something. Yeah. Uh, tell me something. Yeah. Um. Did Cook Off open some doors for you? Cook Off being on Netflix and being uh, and you being uh, the main actor, being uh, uh, the, the, the 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 lead character there. Uh, uh, did, uh, did it um uh, did it open some doors for you? That's a very good question. Um, and I think I think the beauty of what happened with Cook Off was that it, it was released on Netflix during the pandemic. Yeah. And so uh, I mean there's a there's a everyone who was actually forced a, to, to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you forced? You didn't force anyone. I know, I, I know, um, I, 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 I know I, I, I'm saying that because of pandemic. So so, yeah, I don't so know. everyone was watching. actually forced to, to, to be on TV. No, definitely. Like people, that's a, that's the good thing, right? Is that um, I think the doors that were opened were really about how there were so many people who were able to watch. And so there are lots of people who got to watch me on screen, which was great. Um, in terms of future productions, definitely. Um, there are some future productions that I'm going to be in because of Netflix. <laughs> But to be honest, it's really about maximizing the moment. And this is why I was saying I want to, I'm really focusing right now on building a team around me because I can't, one, one thing I learned uh, uh, when Cook Off was released on Netflix was that it was so much, it was so overwhelming. The response that we got, the media attention that we got, it was so overwhelming. I got burnt out and I realized that I needed help, you know, to really maximize on what had happened, Right. And so this is why it's important for me now to really build a team around me because then I can fully maximize on what has happened, um, the groundbreaking fact that it's made history as the first Zimbabwe production on Netflix. What does that really mean and how can I maximize on that uh, and make sure that you know, I, I can secure more work and more collaborations, more partnerships. Um, so that's what I'm currently working on. There are doors, but I think some doors I'm going to have to really be intentional and strategic in, in getting those opportunities to, to be of value for me. Correct, correct. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the other day, I was just scrolling on Instagram and boom, I'm seeing one of the international superstar again, Connie was posted, she actually posted you on her Instagram. I said, what? This girl is <laughs> gone, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I love Connie, she's amazing. She's so amazing, Carabo. Okay. Um, See, then right here now, um, um, yeah, uh, the, I know you might have some meetings uh, after this, but um, just help me. Uh, uh, there might be somebody out there who say, Mr. Dongo, yes, yeah, you, you did great. You you brought her here. And thank you so much uh, for also putting Africa as well on the map. But I, I, I don't know where to start. I also want to do something. What's your advice uh, to somebody at the who might say, I, I know I'm great. I know I'm good at this. I know I'm good at that. But I have no idea where to start, what to do, how to go, uh, whose door to, to, to knock. Can you help me to put me on? Are you training as, what is it? Yeah. Can you just uh, 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 share, share, share with that? Like, um, how can somebody who wants to, to jump into this, uh, uh, tap in, in, into the industry? That's a very good question. Um, like I said, when I was starting out, I didn't have a lot of information, but I think now more and more people think um, people and also information is becoming accessible, accessible, especially on the internet. So what I used to do as well that helped me a lot was I watched a lot of content online. So I would Google 
um, Hollywood actors. I would Google stuff about acting. I would Google auditioning stuff. I would Google how to get an agent. Um, I, I fortunately went to school for it. So I, I studied film and media and drama at university. Wow. But I know some people are not fortunate enough to, to go to university. I know some people don't have the funds to train, but there's so many resources online and so many workshops, um, especially if you live in a country where um, you know there's an acting community or an acting industry, there will be workshops that are in your area so, and also if you're not in a community in a in a in a place where they're acting workshops you can also google and there's so many resources online that can help you at least for a start you can also read books um online they're acting books there's certain specific if you google um acting the best acting uh books ever written whatever authors you will find a list that will tre tre uh, um, teach you how to to act I know my little brother, um, he's, he's not trained in acting, but uh, he managed to book a, a, an acting role on, on this movie called Shina, which is one of Zimbabwe's uh, latest films. And um, he, after acting in China, he actually bought himself a book online. I was so proud of him, but you know, he's, he's showing initiative. So even though he's not trained, mm -hmm. he's, he bought a book that can help him and teach him how to act uh, even better for next time. So so I would encourage people to be, again, be proactive about learning. A lot of people think, oh, you know what? I'm just outgoing and I'm talented. I can just wing it. But what will differentiate you from a person who's trained and a person, uh, what will differentiate you from, from someone who's trained is that they will have the discipline, they will have the skill to know how to do certain things. So you just need that extra bit of information and guidance that you can get from books and from workshops and from uh, resources online. And then also, once you've done that, I would, I would suggest that you find other like-minded people. So find producers, find directors, find fellow actors in your community. You can meet them online. Again, on there's so many acting groups or film groups around wherever you are. Just look for those and start interacting with them. Join a film group. Um, start producing stuff. I mean, just work with people, network and collaborate. I think one thing that we learned from Kokov is about co collaboration. How that movie was made was all about collaboration. People came together and they made things happen, even um, against all odds, because we know Zimbabwe is not an easy place to do anything in terms of the economy and stuff. So, but yeah. collaboration made it happen. So I would say train, learn, uh, collaborate, network, and get the experience you need and just put yourself out there and you'll be, you'll be good to go. <laughs> amazing amazing collaboration collaboration if there was no collaboration there was no going there, there, there wasn't going to be anyone who is successful so thank you thank you so much for, for, for sharing that um and then uh, maybe um, uh, 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 in your closing you might as well tell us uh, what was your 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 highlight moment in your uh, acting career so far and then uh, you also gonna tell us where can people access you? Uh, 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 where can they like you? But please know that we're also gonna put links in the comments. Uh, we're also gonna put links for, for, for your social platforms and everywhere where you can be able to actually connect uh, 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 with her. So, so, so attendee, um, what was your the, uh, highlight in, in your career so far? And maybe what's your next move? <laughs> next move um okay firstly i would like to say my highlights to be honest has been um just knowing that i have been able to inspire a lot of people and that i've made a difference i've been part of something bigger than myself that has been a highlight for me um to know that i'm part of you know shaping a narrative about zimbabwe about africa and that I am making a difference. That's been the highlight so far. And then uh, what, what is my next move? My next move, like I said, is to build my, um, to build a team, to build uh, a career, and also to make sure that I'm featuring in some more work so that everybody can enjoy and see me in more stuff. I can't say what the stuff is because it's a secret. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> 
be yeah be on the lookout and uh in due time you'll see me again on your screens and i'm just really excited to be um yeah to be showing you what africa can do and what filmmakers in africa can can do wow my sister <laughs> thank you so much uh, you you might think that uh, you are just saying and, and just sharing the but you you don't know how much you you actually mean to to our community and what you have been sharing you have no idea how much content you have given and you know be be a speaker be a consultant be an actor or an entrepreneur out there business is business and what she was say is saying is one of the most amazing things so thank you so much Isabella for sharing that so where where can we get you where can you, do you have an instagram do you have a facebook do you have a twitter do you have a tiktok where are you and what's your handle <laughs> I do have a TikTok but I haven't posted anything on my TikTok so I'll give you <laughs> <Please don't laughs> I will give don't you uh, my Instagram and my Twitter they are tendai underscore chitima okay. and uh, I am on Facebook tendai chitima tendai underscore chitima as well so um just google me and you'll find uh, my my social media uh, links but thank you so much everyone for supporting I'm really really grateful for all the support and yeah all the best with your endeavors <laughs> thank you so much so well you you heard it there we have got our superstar our international superstar tendai chitima uh and was sharing with us everything that we might need to know about film industry and how did she start from wherever she was to where she is right now so and also for for, for you to, to 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 watch more of these interviews was we have got some legends on our show please make sure that you also click on the button below and make sure that you are in our bnc academy so that you can be able to access to, to that and so many other trainings as well so from from, from me to you thank you so much and tonight from the whole team from the rest of the team thank you so much my sister for coming here and joining us and sharing with us this has been the most amazing interview that i ever had in the past three months <laughs> so thank you so much for that thank you for having me munya okay thank you <laughs>